what is up guys this is Tito back with another video on the Redmi K20 Pro and today in this video I'm gonna be showing you the latest HyperOS on this device and this is the Xiaomi.eu HyperOS of course based on Android 14 and this is the beta version too you can see and the build date over here is of 21st January 2024 and if you don't know how to flash this from on your device you can check out the flashing guide from the description let me just go into the settings panel and in here talking about the about section this is how it looks like we got the Xiaomi HyperOS logo right there and we have the build number and stuff and shows Xiaomi.eu right here and if you scroll down a little bit more and go into the detailed specs here you will get the Android version and if you keep tapping on it you will get the Android 14 Easter egg and here also you can see the security patch or the security update here it shows as January's 2024 security patch talking about the home screen this is how it looks like it looks beautiful I have to say and to the left of the home screen we have the app vault and if you just swipe up you will get the app drawer and if you swipe down you will get the quick setting panel like this and here from the widget section you will get the new MIUI kind of widgets or the hyperwise kind of widgets as you can see and i have also added the weather widget right here let me show you in the next screen and here this is how it looks like and if you just tap over here it will go into the direct weather app you can also add the clock widget and stuff if you want to but yeah all the animations of the widgets as you can see are looking really really beautiful just like android 14 animations and opening and closing apps it looks beautiful i have to say the animations are really good no problem so far with it. By the way, I'm shooting this video on the Poco F5 with the latest Evolution X ROM on 4K 60fps preset. Let me know in the comments how it looks like. Well, the stock launcher settings, this is how it looks like. And here I have to say this is the modified kind of HyperOS stock launcher and it has huge amount of customizations like this disable wallpaper zoom, restart launcher options are there. We have the system navigations and stuff. You can change it to buttons if you want to. And we have the gesture kind of stuff. And in here, you can also change the recent style and I have enabled this show memory status and you can also change the task bottom space and the corner radius and all. We have this blur in recents and you will also get this iOS style recents here. I have enabled that. We also have the home screen layout customization. You can actually change it. Well, I accidentally changed it to 4x13, but I think by default it was on 4x6 and we have the icon size customization, even more customization that you can see from the screen. And of course we have the double tap to sleep screen and we have the home screen kind of options you can have it with app drawer or you can have it on the light mode or we have the classic mode we have the hide app drawer indicator then we have the app session disabling option and the backgrounds you can actually change that from right here the transparency stuff and we have the scroll bar a to z option we also have this status bar clock visibility customization here and we have the go back to previous app option let me just go back and here in terms of the home screen again it looks beautiful and you can also have the folder customization and you can have the enlarged folders and the double excel size folders then we have the suggested highlight apps options so let me actually show you the enlarged folder this is how it will look like and you can change the position of them no issues with it so yeah this is how it looks you can also have the big kind of folders and as you can see this is how the folder opening animation actually looks like looks really really cool i have to say and in terms of the stock apps of course we have the normal calculator app and stuff and you can also have it on like a overlay it will look like this and yeah the optimization overall i have to say it looks really really beautiful no issues with it and everywhere the optimization of hyperos looks really really cool also the sidebar is working perfectly fine and the good thing is you can actually open particular apps in like this full screen mode or the split screen mode and if i just click on split screen as you can see this actually opened in split screen now i can open a separate app and with that as you can see both of the apps are right now opened in split screen and if i just go home and these two apps will stay in memory or in recents with this split screen option and you can i can just open them anytime i want to and you can resize the apps over here in the split screen mode and just look at the colors it looks really really cool while like resizing and you can of course change the position of them just like this and here you will also get these kind of options like this overlay kind of options and i can have this one as you can see this is how right now it is a floating window right now and as you can see it shows a floating window kind of guide and you can put this to some side i guess okay so that went somewhere else but yeah i can just put it to floating window just like this and i can open different apps like this so yeah these are really cool miui features i have to say but yeah in the recent panel it looks really really nice i have to say just notice this it looks so good shows the ram status right here and i can clear all the apps from memory from right here by the way in the quick setting panel it looks like this you know which ways it looks closer to 
I'm not gonna explain that but yeah if you have a sim card in the device vault calling and stuff will be working fine and we have the mobile data then the Wi-Fi right here and you can just like pull them out from right here I mean expand the settings of them and we have the playback kind of stuff right here then we have this me smart hub you can have the smart devices control from right here and if you want to edit the quick setting toggle panel this is how you can do that and you can edit and add multiple different toggles from right here these are the toggles that I have added you can take a glimpse of it and just notice the background really looks cool and in the quick setting toggles I would say you don't get a text whichever is which so you have to actually look carefully <laughs> whichever toggle you are enabling this is the torch and this is the settings particularly that you can go into it from right here and of course you can change the position of them if you want to from right here you can disable or enable the auto brightness from right here and the auto brightness I have seen it's actually working perfectly fine as you can see right now it has dimmed the display a little bit so I'll just increase that for the time being also if you open up security settings in here in the battery settings you can put it to performance mode of course and there are huge amount of more settings as you can see you can test the network and all the hyperways kind of new features you will get over here second space game turbo everything you will get over here so you will get all the MIUI kind of features with a little bit more optimization I would say in this hyperways and that's really nice to see otherwise this hyperways definitely gets a thumbs up from me for the redmi k20 pro and it is xiaomi.eu so you won't get any kind of bloatware or ads let's assume you are trying to install an apk let me show you this is how the apk actually looks like the installer I mean and here you won't see any kind of ads or something like that you can just straight up install it or update it from right here and it will actually show you the details which app you are updating and whichever the version is that you are updating to all the MIUI gallery kind of AI features are available in this room for photos and videos editing but here one thing I have to warn you guys that do not just go into the power menu and reboot the device because once you do that it may boot loop I have faced that once already so do not reboot the device from here just like normally power it off and just normally power it on do not reboot here and you may have to clean flash the ROM if you are rebooting the device so be careful about the reboot option here let's talk about the stock camera well you are getting the Leica camera version 5 and with that you are getting huge amount of features the lens switching option and stuff everything is working perfectly fine and in the video settings you can go up to 4k and 60 fps as you can see from right here you can also go into the pro video mode and there also you can go up to 4k and 60 fps if you want to you can change the white balance the focus the shutter speed iso etc while shooting 4k 60 ps videos that's really nice we have the portrait mode right here and even with that the front motorized camera is actually working perfectly fine no problems with it so that's really nice and we have the night mode the 48 megapixel mode everything should be working fine and then we also have this panorama vlog well i have to download them but yeah these options are there if you want to use them you definitely can so the miui camera or Leica camera version 5 having it right out of the box it's really nice Talking about performance, yes, it shows 80 to 90 FPS most of the time with 90 Hz. If you're switching the display refresh rate to 60 Hz, it will show 60 Hz over here. 90 Hz is actually working fine here. So you can play games at 90 Hz, I guess, if the game support it. Also, the overall UI performance here, it's really, really fast. No issues that I have faced regarding performance. But yes, there is slight choppiness because I use custom ROMs, I can see them. So otherwise, if you are a MIUI user, you won't see them as much. But yeah, overall, while scrolling and stuff, you will not notice any kind of huge issues. As you can see, switching between apps, it's not a problem at all. Everything is perfectly fast and smooth in this particular ROM that I have to say. And here are the Android and Geekbench score with a CPU stress test on this particular build to give you an idea about the overall UI performance. And in the battery settings, this is how it looks like. We have the balanced profile right here, but you can also change it to performance mode, balanced battery saver or the ultra battery saver. And it will actually show with each option how long your phone will last. So that's really awesome. Now talking about the battery life, I have tested that. Now with the Aku battery app, let me actually show you, I have tested the battery life. And here the screen on time that I'm getting, it's not something to boast about, but yeah, I, my device was completely in idle condition for most of the time. Maybe that's why it shows a little bit lower for the screen on time, it shows about five and a half hours. But yeah, it will definitely last you six to seven hours without any problems. And the screen off for my usage, it shows about seven days. These are all estimated numbers, but still I would say a week of standby time, it's just awesome. And the combined use also shows as more than three days. So you can guess the battery life here is really good. And in the health section, you will see my battery health is at 90% because I have new battery over here. I replaced the battery a couple of months ago. This battery has about 100 charging cycles and with that, the battery life that I'm getting, it's pretty good, I have to say. And even the fast charging here working perfectly fine. And the fast charging animations over here in this HyperOS looks really, really nice. 
Now let me talk about one of the best features of Hyper-OS that is the always on display and for that I have to enable the always on display first and I'll go into the always on display settings and in here into this AOD and then you can enable the always on display. Now the good thing is you can actually change the display time. You can have it on for 10 seconds. Then we have the always then we have the schedule option Then we have even more options for the always on display and you can customize the themes from right here. There are the old kind of always on display kind of clocks. But if you go into the lock screen clock here, this is how it looks like. And you can customize that from right here. If you just tap and hold this lock screen option, you have to unlock the device. Then you will get the lock screen clocks. And there are plethora of clock options here. If you just swipe down, you will get multiple different classic options. Then we have the Rome bus kind of options. Just notice how beautiful they look, each of them. And even the magazine options are there. And these are one of the best features of HyperOS that I have to say. The lock screen you can definitely customize to however you like. This is the always on display and this is how it looks. Now here the double tap to wake I have to say it's not double tap to wake it's about five times to wake I guess. Sometimes I have to like double tap for a lot of time then the screen wakes up but that's how it is. And here the unlocking speed let me actually show you or the animation how it looks like. Just notice how beautiful it looks. The unlocking speed it's really fast no problems and I can double tap a blank area of the device it will go to sleep and just notice the unlocking speed. The fingerprint scanner is working perfectly fine, no problems whatsoever with it. Just notice how fast it unlocks. And even this clock animation of lock screen and the always on display both looks really really nice. Now you can use whichever clock you love. But also in this customization section, you will get this fingerprint option and in here, you will have the new fingerprint kind of animations. These butterfly ones are there but they don't look that much good. Let me actually show you in the lock screen. Here with this option. If I just tap on the fingerprint scanner area, this is how it looks and this blue butterfly one here, as you can see, this is how it looks. I like the default neon option more, I would say. You can use all the MIUI themes if you want to, just like this, as you can see, plethora of MIUI themes are there and you can also search the theme store if you want to. The charging animations also you can change from right here. We have this lock screen customization, there is a double tap to wake or sleep. We have the race to wake option as well and it works and we have the lock screen timeout right here. Let me go back from here and in the app settings we have the system app kind of settings manage apps 12 apps and the app lock option is also there i have locked the telegram app let me actually show you how it looks like this is the app locking ui if you just tap on the fingerprint scanner the app actually unlocks and goes wherever you left it so yeah this is really cool now let's talk about the basic stuff so this play integrity app actually shows that it passes the device integrity and the basic integrity both so the banking apps will be working perfectly fine here also the Google Play Store here shows as device is certified. So that's really one more nice thing to have. The DRM Info shows as L1 so you can stream Netflix or Amazon Prime videos in 1080p. And with the Google Photos app it actually shows that this pixel can back up unlimited photos and videos at no extra charge. So that's again a huge feature to have at least on MIUI or HyperOS. In the additional settings this is how it looks like. We have the date and time with the language stuff and the region. Then we have the gesture shortcut, quick ball, one handed mode and the clear speaker option. The one handed mode if you enable that let me actually show you if it works. So yeah right now as you can see I'm using the one handed mode it is working fine. This is the basic Android 14 kind of one handed mode and we have this kind of gesture shortcuts you can customize them if you want to. Then we have the quick ball option you can enable that if you want but I have been using the sidebar also as you just saw it is working fine. We have the clear speaker option then the floating windows option is also there and we have the smart station and the sidebar option you can enable and disable or even you can customize that if you want to. We also have the memory extension not really a useful feature for me at least and we have the LED light kind of options then we have the second space right here so you can have dual apps kind of feature right here then we have the accounts and sync option then the enterprise mode and the developer option and we also have the backup and restore sound effects and the full screen display options and the factory reset option right here in the additional settings on the bottom. In the sound settings we get a separate sound and touch option and you can tap on each of them this is how it will look and here you can actually change the haptic feedback of the whole UI you can customize that we have the critical feedback and then we have this realistic touch options in the normal sound settings we have the silent mode the silent media in silent mode we have the do not disturb vibrate for calls and the profile video for incoming call then we have the sound effects and you can enable the hi-fi audio you can have the custom effects even the equalizer option is there then we have the headphone button control and the assign button options are also there and we have some additional settings in here we have the control notification sound and we have the adjust media sound in multiple apps and we have the multiple audio sources option then the volume control option is there we have even more sound controls right here you can see them from the screen 
In the display settings, we have the light and dark mode and you can customize the dark mode if you want to from right here. These are the options for that. We have the screen brightness, the auto brightness mode and the sunlight mode is also there. We have the advanced textures and we have the color scheme and you can actually customize that if you want to. And we have the anti flicker or the descending mode. I have enabled that. Then we have the refresh rate customization in this room. You can put it to 90 hertz, but with that, I feel the screen turns out to be a little bit more yellowish. But yeah, 90 hertz does work over here. We have the AI engine kind of options as you can see. And we also have the font size customization right here. Then we have the normal lock screen customization again. By the way, with 90 hertz, the app opening up animations looks really cool, I have to say. The phone definitely feels much more smoother. And even in Twitter, let me actually start scrolling here. Just notice. Yeah, there is slight choppiness here. That is fine with me, why I guess. But yeah, if you compare it with AOSP ROMs, it will feel slightly choppier in this Hyper-OS. But yeah, if you're used to with Hyper-OS and if you need the Hyper-OS features, you will be honestly fine with it. Of course, it has the MIUI dialer as the stock dialer. And in the settings of it, we do have the call recording option. So you can have the auto call recording for all numbers. So that's really nice. If you're a Hyper-OS user or MIUI user, you will definitely love it because it's on top of Android 14. You are getting one of the best camera experiences, one of the best Hyper-OS kind of features like the lock screen clocks and all, everything will look really, really nice. And whenever you are putting the device on the desk and whenever you are picking it up from idle condition, you will get this fingerprint scanner ring, looks really beautiful. You can just tap on the fingerprint scanner and it's just straight up unlocks and it's a really smooth experience overall. Even the face unlock and stuff, everything is working fine, I'm not showing you that. But overall, if you are a MIUI lover, you will definitely love this kind of ROM. For me personally, I won't actually daily drive it because Hyper-OS or be it Hyper-OS or even MIUI, I don't like the overall UI. Yes, they are looking beautiful, but I love the stock Android feel. I love the stock Android kind of customization. So with the storage test, this is pretty much time to wrap up this video. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Share this video with your friends if you feel like. And please subscribe to the channel if you have not yet. This is Tito from KTN Tech signing off for today. I'll be catching you guys in the next one. Bye-bye now.